Hello, it's Landon Degatti, a member of Long Island Cares and founder of Food for Thought, a place for people of all ages and backgrounds to share ideas and learn about the most pressing food security issues. I'm here today with a special guest, Karen Washington, who has too many accomplishments to list. But to name a few, she was voted one of the most influential African-Americans in the country by Ebony Magazine. She was awarded the prestigious James Beard Leadership Award. She is the board member of the New York Botanical Gardens and co-owner farmer at Rise and Root Farm, a, a five acre farm rooted in social justice and through the healing power of food. Hello, Karen, and thank you for joining us today. Hi, thanks for having me. So today, I would like to get your thoughts on how people of my generation and future generations can become involved in food justice issues and really make a difference. So with that being said, my first question today is, what is food justice? And why is it so important for younger generations to learn about this topic? Yeah, so the word food justice now has been used so wisely that I think people understand maybe exactly what the definition is, you know, um, the lack of people having access to food. But for me, the definition I always use is the transformation of the food system to eliminate the disparities we often see. And I say that because I try to really look at the word transformation. And for me, when you talk about food justice, it's a movement. And that being a movement is not, not a passive movement, but it's an active movement. So if you're doing work on food justice, then you have to be actively involved in dismantling the social injustices that you see, social injustice around race, lack of um, an, a, a job, uh, lack of access to land, lack of the ability to be self-sufficient and self-reliant. Uh, there's so many... Um, isms that are out there as well that um, people need to sort of deal with. So for me, you have to be actively um, involved in dismantling the social injustices that we normally see in today's society. Yeah, it's a great response. And I really agree with all of that. So my next question is, what role do small scale farmers and food producers play in creating more just and sustainable food systems? And how can we support them? Yeah, so I think that we have um, been given a food system since the Industrial Revolution that has expanded and has expanded in terms of being um, corporations. Corporations, large-scale farms that where they don't really have these um, consumer um, at heart. It's about capitalism. It's about extractiveness, exploitation for me. And um, in this food movement, what the small farmer and small producers trying to accomplish is a more connect relationship to a consumer. And that means that having that one-on-one -on -one, um, relationship of asking the consumer what they want, what they need. Um, and I think that's lacking in this sort of huge on conglomerate when we talk about agriculture. So the small farm is now understanding that in order for him or her to succeed, they have to build a relationship directly to the consumer and to the customer. And so what you're seeing is a lot of uh, small farm farmers and producers are now um, putting the customer first. They're asking the customer what they want. They're, they're, they are communicating directly to the, to the customer because you know they can't um reach they can't work on a large scale uh, of view of what food is all about so i think that by reconnecting directly to the consumer to the customer asking the customer what they want asking the consumer or the customer to come visit the farm so they can ask, so they can actually see where uh things are grown is very very important important and has been successful yeah do you think there's a way that these consumers can make it easier for these small scale, scale farmers and food producers to become more sustainable? Oh, yeah, by supporting them. Hello. <laughs> you know, by um, asking, first of all, asking exactly where the food comes from, seeing where the food comes from, um, visiting various farms in the area, um, visiting farmers markets, 
um, purchasing food online, um, do be part of a CSA, which is a uh, community supported agriculture. Um, there are ways that, um, especially in my farm, how we try to connect with our, our consumers is we have um, site visits. So, so we encourage our, our customers to come to our farm to see exactly where their food is grown. We have farmer's markets, uh, we have online services. And so what you're starting to see, again, like I said, is this sort of communication of farmers having a direct conversation with their consumers and asking consumers, like, what is it that you want us to grow? You know, what is it that we're not growing that you want us to grow? So to have that that symbiotic relationship, which is so, so important, it gives the farmer a chance to hear what the consumer wants, but also the consumer, the customer feels like, you know, they're part of, 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 of the farm. Mm -hmm. I think that um, you said the symbiotic relationship between the consumer and the producer. I do think that is very, very important. So what <laughs> policies and initiatives are being implemented or proposed to address food justice issues and how effective are they? Well, right now, everyone is gathering around the farm bill. So the farm bill happens every, I think this through um, five to seven years. And I think the last farm bill was in 2000, oh, was it 2018? So um, right now um, there are sessions being held, uh, listening sessions being held to really um, ask the American people and especially farmers and, and growers exactly what they didn't want to see in a farm bill. So as a person of color, I want to see more emphasis on equity. So I live, so I farm in New York state and out of 57,000 farmers in New York state, only 139 are black. And so we need to sort of talk about what it means, what equity looks like, you know, um, and why is it that uh, this small group of farmers are not getting the resources um, and, and support that they need. So in the farm bill, I want to see more emphasis on um, BIPOC um, farmers, young farmers, women farmers, um, black farmers, so that there is a way for farmers to to grow, especially in a climate where we have an aging population of farmers. The average age of a farmer nationwide is between 61 and 65 years of age. And so how do we prepare for the next generation of people to become farmers? So there needs to be some sort of incentive in the farm bill, I like to see, you know, they mentioned like the 4-H club, which was a uh, program, which was, really was a rural program to encourage young um, men and women to become farmers. But I like it to be more broad based to incorporate both urban and rural um, people to understand the mechanism of, of farming. I think there also needs uh, within the farm bill and other policy to encourage um, a place where farmers can have access to land. Land, as you know, well, I mean, you don't know because you're 15, but you may know how uh, expensive land is. You live in Long Island, so you know how expensive land is. So can you imagine land in, in agricultural settings? And so finding ways to make land affordable for up and coming farmers to deal with debt. You know, you want um people to have access to land and to farm, but we have a huge, as you know, student uh, loan debt problem. And so how do we and can encourage uh, people that want to farm, you know, say for instance, they farm over for five years, they can have their student loan um, erased. Um, encouraging returned citizens that have been incarcerated, trying to find, and, and our veterans trying to find ways where they have access to land and, and farming as a vocation as well. That's why they need to vote me in terms of Congress um, and what's, what's happening today is ridiculous. But um, this is some of the things, the political things that need to be done in the farm bill that's specifically for agriculture. Mm -hmm. Can you explain, maybe some of our viewers don't know what exactly the farm bill is? So the farm bill happens every, like I said, I think five to seven years. And what it is, is really looking at ways that we can tackle uh, farming and food in our industry. So the farm bill has a lot of programs that encourages to help the farmers, you know, with support, land issues, but also the consumer. And one of the biggest 
chunk of the farm bill is the SNAP program, the um, supplement nutrition uh, program, which helps um, low income neighborhoods of, of families uh, to have access to supplement their ability to, to purchase food. And so, um, and, and the pandemic has really brought to the forefront how tenuous um, food insecurity is because in a moment time you can become poor and food insecure. And so again, um, you know, for me, it's a band-aid because I think the we need to really talk about the problem of hunger and poverty in the greatest country in the world where we grow enough food and we waste enough food. And that food is not getting down to the people that need it the most. And we need as a country to tackle, um, you know, hunger and poverty, hunger and poverty, homelessness. I mean, this should not happen in this country. And so the policy within the farm bill helps to address that. However, we need to find solutions. You know, we need to find solutions. Why is it that we have homelessness? Why is it that we have hunger? Why is it that we have poverty? And I think of the farm bill is one way of, of addressing that, but it doesn't fix the problem. And I think overall what we need to do is how do we come together as a civil society to tackle those um, issues that um, should not be, you know, we should not have people who are homeless. We shouldn't have people who live in, in poverty or who are hungry. This should not happen in the United States, which is one of the greatest countries in the world. Mm, I agree. So you said we need to find solutions to these problems. So what do you think the best way future generations can get involved in helping to improve food justice? To be more proactive and in instead of reactive, I always tell people, you know, people sit on the sidelines and they'll tell you, yes, we have a problem with hunger and poverty, but they do nothing about it. So especially young people, I would... Um, ask them to get involved in their school, you know, um, especially the school lunch program, you know, asking the principal, you know, where our food coming from, um, where, how come we don't have food that's coming from our local farmers, um, getting our, uh, getting parents and, and, and students to understand that we have a labeling problem, you know, I mean, everything should be labeled, uh, the ingredients should be labeled, where food comes from should be labeled so that we can make a, a a wise choice in the food that we put in our body. Many times we have labeling on products that you can't even pronounce, what, you know, you know, and so things need to be labeled. And what I mean is that people need to, to be advocates and, and, and activists and, and call out the food system and demand change, you know, demand change in terms of how we spend our dollars. We are so, so, so collectively powerful. If we can take our dollars and demand change, it's like, you know, we're not going to go to the supermarket if this supermarket is not providing food that is healthy and as local and that is fresh. You know, we're not going to support a company that we know is doing damage to our environment. And so collectively, we can really use our activism to change policies and to make change within our local community. And I always tell people, you know, the broad essence of problems that we have is not only nationally, but globally. However, I tell people to act local, you know, go within your local community and demand change, you know, go into your local supermarket and ask if they're supporting local farmers, you know, go around and see if there are businesses that are doing recycling you know, um, asking those questions, you know, um, going to supermarkets and challenging the produce manager to make sure that they get things that are that that are local, um, you know, just go around and look at the environment, you know, and making sure that people have access to parks um, and recreation activities, um, making sure that one thing I think I'm proud of, I think that New York State I know in the city has banned the plastic ba bags. And so how do we think about, you know, using paper or, or having people bring their own bags? So there are, these are the little things locally that you can do. And the most important thing, and I think that I've learned from my years of dealing with politics, is to know your local politician, meet with them, sit down and, and ask exactly what are they doing to make the world a better place? 
You know, I think we have a chance now, especially when we see what is happening, Lord knows, playing out right in, in front of us um, as, you know, we're trying to get the House of Representatives in order, is that we as voting citizens have a right to make sure that whoever we elect, that they are accountable to the needs and the wills of the people. And so, like I said, these are small things that can be done locally within our community. And so I don't know if you are, you know, are in the um, area where we you collect, you, um, people have voted for one particular senator, I hope that um, we have a chance to, re regardless on what aisle we vote for, is that we elect whoever wants to run for office, that they tell the truth, that there's integrity, that we do background checks to make sure that, you know, the candidate that we vote for is the person that they say they are. And I will end with that. Thank you so much.